and welcome to Celebrating Act Two. I'm John Coleman. No, no, wait. I'm Art <laughs> Kirsch. No, no, no. I'm Manny Pacheco, and I'm here with John Coleman and Art Kirsch. And today we have a very, very special Celebrating Act Two in which I get to ask the hosts their favorite movies, movie stars, and everything classic film. Welcome, John and Art. Well, thank you, Manny. Thanks, You're Manny, really for having us. us. Thank you, John. I can tell. <laughs> You're laughing. Look at this. <laughs> That's great. You turned the tables completely upside down. I love wow. it. Well, why not? And you know what? I've been wanting to turn the tables on Art for a long time. Okay. So. Well, then I'm going to give you that opportunity right now to opine on, and I I have about five or six real favorites, and I'll reveal all of them. But number one. Yes. One that got me into well, loving movies before, forever. Well, before you do, yeah. let me just say I've been doing this with you guys now for about three years. Yep. I have chatted about just about every favorite film that I have, not to mention uh, great stories that I share. This is the opportunity for your fans of Celebrating Act 2 to really you know, capture intimate moments of what makes you really excited when you sit down in front of a, uh, a screen and watch some of those all-time classics. So go ahead, Art. What were you going to tell us? All right. Well, a little bit of my forgotten childhood was my first favorite film ever was Dumbo. 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 Oh, gosh. There, oh that was so sad. Yeah. Well, all of them. They all had dead mothers. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bambi. Uh, no, but did they all? They all. They all had. Like did they again. always have dead mothers? That's what he he. He trafficked in them. But anyway, yeah. Dumbo was always, it just, it's like the, my favorite golden book was The Little Engine That Could. Yeah. Dumbo was my favorite first ever What movie. was it? When you were a child and, and Dumbo just tugged at your heartstrings? Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, it was, it was just, it was, it was the, the story of, of a, uh, a child that overcame uh, the loss of a parent and right. and had these big floppy ears and sort of didn't fit in yeah. and uh, it was just a sweet movie yeah, yeah. It, it really is a sweet movie and you know as a child I don't know how anybody wouldn't select a Disney movie for me it was Fantasia and Pinocchio so I get it I totally oh, and get also, it let me just give you a follow up to it so in 1955 uh, well after that moment in my life I went, well, not that far, I guess, went to the opening week of Disneyland, California. My parents made a cross-country trip, and uh, they they have a Dumbo ride. And I was yes. so excited, and it was one of the two or three rides that wasn't open yet. I was there on the third day the park opened. So it wasn't until about uh, 20 years later that I took my granddaughter, who's now 30, uh, but way back then, and we went to Disneyland with them, and it was open, and I got to ride on it with Finally. them. Finally. Yeah. Gosh, that, what a so, touching so, 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 John, so, John, so far it's been the Dumbo show. <laughs> Give us a... How, how about... I, well, here's, here's my problem. My problem is I love all kinds of movies. And so if I had to pick my favorite film of all time, mm -hmm. quite frankly, it would be The Princess Bride. Because it's got everything. It's really? got romance. It's got action. It's mm. got comedy. It's I, I just love The Princess Bride. That would be my favorite all-time movie, believe it or not. I don't think I have a movie from my childhood like Dumbo. Uh, but I do remember mostly going to the movies with friends. And we would watch one of two kinds of pictures. They'd either be the sword and sandal uh, movies... And for some reason, the name Victor Mature always came mm -hmm. to mind. Yeah. But my favorite sword and sandal movie would be Ben-Hur, without any, hands down, my favorite uh, uh, Roman movie. But the other kind was the, the schlock um, uh, scary movies. And the one that sticks in my mind, I think was one of the worst, was The Tingler. Oh. Yeah. The Tingler. I don't know if they were all William Castle movies or oh, not. Oh, just say William he Castle, made, that's he right. He made some of the worst. And we would go and throw popcorn at the screen and have laughs. And <laughs> we just had a great time with those movies. But those, The Tingler, 
Yeah. Particularly, was... they put buzzers in the seats. That's right. And they said, it's loose in the theater. And then somebody somewhere would push a button and somebody's seat would would uh, <laughs> vibrate. And some girl in the third row would jump up and down, scared, ah! <laughs> anyway, yeah. those, those are the movies of my childhood. William Castle movies. Boy, are they the most underrated horror films of all time? The, the uh, Pit and the Pendulum. Uh, mm. yeah. You know, by the yeah. way, there, there are so many Hitchcock films, for instance, that, uh, uh, that I enjoyed. But I guess my early films as a adult, semi-adult, were... Uh, and this will be no surprise to either one of you. I've spoken about it before. Uh, African Queen and oh. Citizen Kane. And African oh, yeah. Queen, it, um, oh, Citizen Kane primarily, I didn't know the term until I studied uh, art, uh, movie history later on in, uh, in uh, uh, maybe I was already in my 50s. Camera Obscura, the, the shadows that they use to change the yeah. scene. And I didn't know why. Uh, that was so effective uh, with with my emotions on it. But though, those two movies, and African Queen, I think is Bogart. I know a lot of other people disagree. I think it's Bogart's best uh, movie to me, to me. So everybody can have their favorites. But those, are, know, those are my two sort of growing up uh, favorite movies. You know who agreed with you? The uh, the the, fan, the voters of the uh, of the Academy. They they awarded Bogie his only Academy Award oh. for the African. Queen. So yeah. you can't be too off there, Art. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you mentioned uh, cam the uh, the uh, technique. Uh, one of my favorite all-time films that I am still impressed with to this day is just the opposite. It was a post-World War II Italian film, Vittorio De Sica, um, and it was just the opposite. No technique at all. Very simple, but such a moving story. The Bicycle Thief? The Bicycle Thief. Yeah. Oh. I cry just thinking about it. <laughs> well, you know, in a movie like that, uh, uh, among other movies that came from, from Europe post-war, really brought a sense of realism to Hollywood. And that ended up with, uh, we ended up responding with movies like The Best Years of Our Lives, yeah. All the Presidents, uh, all, the yeah. King's Men, all the Kingsmen with Broderick Crawford, Gentleman's Agreement. All of those realism type movies mm -hmm. were right. a byproduct of movies like The Bicycle Thief. Yeah. So, uh, Manny, I was, I don't know how old I was, 12 years old in Boy Scout camp. And for some reason, this Boy, ca Boy Scout camp on Friday night would have a play a movie. But they only could get one movie. And we saw the same move every time. It was a, uh, a, a realistic, you know, it was that era of realistic war films. And it was called A Walk in the Sun. Yes. And it, it was a great film as an adult. But I got to tell you, a a kid at Boy Scout camp does not want to sit through, <laughs> you know, this platoon lost in Italy, doing nothing but walking. I and walking and walking. I have to. T I have to share something with you, John. It's funny you mention this. I have never seen the movie until just a couple of weeks ago. Really? I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> I thought it was just absolutely wonderful. Yeah, film. but you weren't a Boy Scout in camp no, worried about if he's going to wake up in the morning. It's not, believe me, it's not a Friday night date movie. Matt. No. <laughs> uh, so uh, as long as we're on war movies, I think you know that I, I'm both a, a fan of uh, those types of movies. And I've probably seen, because I've read his actually his biographies before I saw the film, uh, he had one prior to World War II, and then after World War II, uh, Patton. And I've seen I've seen that about ten or twelve times, and I can continue to watch it and see it time after time. And I've liked series on TVs like Band of Brothers and things like that. But he, this was a unique individual who has probably fascinated me since my twenties. And then Saving Private Ryan is my other favorite uh, war movie. Yeah. I mean, the diversity of films that you guys love is just amazing. When you can go from Dumbo to Saving Private Ryan, that's a pretty wide spectrum. Yeah. I think that, John, you have a, a much more uh, a very direct love of certain kinds of films, I think. Mm. I, I do, although I, I think of it as very eclectic. Um, for instance, I love Godfather 2. As much as I loved Godfather 1, for me, Godfather 2, mm -hmm. to see a young De Niro create 
or recreate at a young Marlon Brando, the young Corleone. Right. What an amazing acting job. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I just, so Godfather 2, and I wasn't Godfather 2 also where they did the uh, uh, the intercutting at the end of the murdering? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I, there's or, a lot of things about Godfather or, or, too. But or Fredo know. got it, you know? yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm smart. I'm smart. Right, let me let me throw another one in. That, that's off the beaten path, and I may have actually mentioned this uh, to you guys before. Memento. To me, that was oh, that's the one wonderful. where the guy had all the tattoos backwards on his body. So yes. you can remember, what a remark! There's been a lot of films like that since, based on that concept, where he has to go backwards and forwards in time. Yeah. Did, did, did these films influence the way you both make films? Hmm. I know. Anyway, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let John give. I'll let John give the longer answer. <clears throat> to me, the answer is no. These are just things I've enjoyed, and uh, John has a much better technical knowledge of film and filmmaking than I do. My job primarily has been the producer. I was known as the cat herder. I would always bring people together and make sure that it showed up and that they were in an accident, send somebody out to bring the actress in because we had the commercial and we're going to lose the crew in the day and the sunlight and that kind of stuff. John, uh, I think always uh, the technical aspects of it is always helping me with editing. So he really understands the flow of things better than I do. So I'd, I'd like to hear, now, John, tell us your, your end of it. Does it affect the way you edit and things like that? Oh, well, thanks for the setup. The answer is no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that with me. Let's screw you. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, one, I, no it, one film has just said, you know what? I'm doing this because that's the film that really made it happen for me. No? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. There's, there's, I learn something from every film I watch. Mm -hmm. and uh, I, But more than anything else, I learn storytelling. And uh, sometimes it's a technique, but mostly it's storytelling and acting. You know, the, it's all the pieces that are put together. And every film is put together differently. Every film is a different story. So you adapt, you learn. But no, there's no film that made me want to. Inconceivable. That's yeah. all. <laughs> That's all I can say. Let's let's bring it back to the Princess Bride. Inconceivable. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll leave you with my la my last recollection um, is singing in the rain. Mm -hmm. I I just find that a, a wonderful fantasy. Just you fantasy. know, in, in many ways, the perfect Hollywood musical, as opposed to a Broadway musical, because yes. it, it was later made into. A stage play, but th that's one of those very special uh, 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 musicals that began on screen, much right. like the, the Wizard of Oz and uh, a few others. But yeah, that's a great choice. And Donald O'Connor, boy, I think he yeah. steals the movie in many ways. So, oh, so does so does Gene Hagen, with that voice of hers, you know, yeah. as as, as the bat as the villainous. Mm -hmm. She's wonderful. Oh, absolutely, I agree with you. You want to leave us with one more art before we uh, call it a. Uh, an afternoon? Funny, uh, just from my standpoint, anything that has uh, Tom Hanks in it, or or Matt Damon, particularly because of uh, the uh, the action sequences that he does, I could it, uh, I know they're going to be in it or starring in it or somehow associated with it. Uh, I'm probably going to go see it, uh, just because I know that at the end of it, I probably will have enjoyed it. Yeah, I feel the same way at this point. You know, the more I see um, Tom Hanks, the more I'm just convinced. He, well, you know, I, I may not like a particular performance, but, you know, mm -hmm. he's usually in a very, very good movie. Um, and it just seems that he has so many tricks in his bag of tricks yeah. that it's, it's just amazing. He's, he's going to end up with a good 100, 110, 120 performances when all is said and done. So wow. there you go. Yeah. Well, uh, let me let me say th uh, thank no, no, you. No, 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 I, I no, no. Let's John, let's not I, rob John of his moment. I've got the last word. Oh, the last word is another one of my favorite films. Here's looking at you, kid. 
well, my favorite, Casablanca. And here's looking at you two. Thank you for what you do. The, the topics that you cover on Celebrating Act Two are amazing. And I appreciate that you actually have decided that one of the genres you want to cover is film. So oh. for that, I'm indebted. My, uh, my, my followers are indebted. And of course, the Celebrating Act Two community is indebted. So thank you, guys. Manny, thanks for making it all fun for us. Yeah, thanks, Thank Ben. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.